welcome everybody. Sherry, if you would let me know if my audio is coming through clearly, I would appreciate it. This Perfect. webinar is going to focus on starting the school year with work sampling online. In terms of the objectives, we're going to make the assumption that those of you here today are using the work sampling system or using work sampling online. And our goal is to describe and demonstrate how two groups, how administrators will use work sampling online at the beginning of the school year to establish their infrastructure. So we're thinking about establishing your teacher roster, creating teachers, establishing the classes in your school, assigning teachers to classes, and then adding children to a teacher's class. So you think about those beginning of the school year activities in which a principal or a site administrator would be engaged to make sure that we can account for all of the children in our school. Every child in the school is in a class and a teacher is assigned to that class. And then we also want to talk about how teachers use work sampling online, and we want to talk about some of the tasks that teachers will perform on work sampling online, and those might include documenting observations, how you'd use the online system to document observations, how you'd use work sampling online to store evidence, and then how you'd use work sampling online to link your observations to performance goals. So those are the broad objectives for today, but I want to get us started by looking briefly at the work sampling system. So thinking about the work sampling system and how we use the work sampling system, and that will take us into a demonstration of work sampling online. So when you think about the work sampling system, you know that there are two major components of the work sampling system, two components, well, two parts that look at the child's development, developmental guidelines and developmental checklists. And the developmental guidelines will describe your end of a, an age level or grade level expectations. You know that work sampling is used for children starting at three years old, a preschool school three-year-old version up to grade three, so P3, P4, kindergarten, grades one, two, and three. So there will be a set of developmental guidelines that will describe the developmental expectations for children at the end of a three-year preschool program, the end of a four-year-old preschool program, and so on. And then your developmental checklist will provide your performance indicators or your learning goals, and you'll use your developmental checklist in conjunction with evidence, including teacher observations, work samples, and other sources of information to formally rate the child's learning, the child's skills, knowledge, and behavior in seven domains, and you'll do that three times per year. In all of that information, the ratings from the developmental checklist will be summarized in a summary report. So when you think about the work sampling system, you think about developmental guidelines and developmental checklists, as well as the summary reports and the information that you'll use to complete the developmental checklist and the summary reports will be based on the evidence that you collect um, during observation while observing the child in his or her natural environment. The work sampling system is available in both paper form and online, and the online version is our focus today. But whether or not you're using the paper version or the online version, what you'll be focused on will be set performance in seven domains, including the second domain, which is language and literacy, the first being personal social development, then you would have mathematical thinking, scientific thinking, um, the arts, social studies, and then physical development, health, and safety. But 
when you think about the developmental guidelines, think about what we would expect a child of a certain age or in a certain grade to be able to do with respect to a specific skill or behavior. So for example, if you were looking at language and you were focusing on listening, a functional component of listening, and maybe the skill on which you're focusing is whether or not all of the children in your room are gaining meaning by listening, you want to collect observational information and then evaluate or analyze the information in conjunction with your developmental expectations. So for a three-year-old with respect to gaining meaning by listening, what would you expect developmentally? Well, three-year-olds tend to learn about their world through watching and listening. They tend to gain understanding of stories by listening to them and watching DVDs repeatedly. If you have a three-year-old, whether in your classroom or your own child, you know that they like to engage in the same activity over and over. Young children Children age three, um, they focus on familiar stories, and when stories are familiar to them, they can listen for relatively longer periods of time. They're able to gain a deeper understanding of the content each time. But if you think about a, a, a child who might be in third grade, certainly as children develop physically, in other words, as they age, their ability to gain meaning by listening will also develop. So by the time the child is in grade three, they're able to listen attentively, they're able to ask questions for clarification, for elaboration, they can listen to text or other media aloud. They're able to recount what they're hearing. They're able to identify and recall main ideas, supporting details. They tend to ask and answer questions based on information that's presented in, in various ways. So developmental guidelines will give you ideas in terms of developmental expectations, what you would expect, for example, a child in grade one to be able to do with respect to a specific skill. And you'll use all of your collected evidence to evaluate the child's ability to gain meaning by listening to determine whether or not ability to gain meaning by listening is consistent with end of end of maybe age level or grade level expectations. In addition to these developmental standards that describe the end of year expectations, you can also use the developmental checklist and you'll use the developmental checklist to focus, for example, on this one performance indicator to which I referred when I looked at the developmental guidelines, gaining meaning by listening. You'll evaluate all of your evidence to assign a rating three times a year, fall, winter and spring, and the ratings are either the child demonstrates the ability to gain meaning by listening consistent with the expectations for children age three, or maybe consistent with expectations for children in grade three. And if that is the case, if the child consistently demonstrates the ability to gain meaning by listening, you assign a rating of proficient. Or you might decide based on the evidence that the child does not yet gain meaning by listening, consistent with age or grade level expectations, consistent with the descriptions in the developmental guidelines, in which case you'd assign a rating of not yet. And then I mentioned the summary report, and certainly you'll use all of the information that you've collected. You look at the developmental checklist at all of your ratings, and then you'll make a decision three times per year with respect to the different domains, personal and social development, for example, language and liter literacy, mathematical thinking, and you're focusing on the child's performance. Is the child's performance as expected, given the descriptors in the developmental guidelines, or maybe the child needs development in a specific domain? And you'll also look at the child's progress. Maybe the child's progress is within the expected range, or maybe the child is progressing at a faster rate than you would expect typically, or maybe the child is progressing at a slower pace than you would expect, in which case your rating would be other than expected. 
Now, when you think about the work sampling system, you're constantly collecting information. You're constantly asking yourself questions. What exactly is it that children should be learning um, at a certain point in the school year? And the questions that you ask really are part of the work sampling system's assessment cycle. So your cycle begins with asking questions. For example, what do the 24 children in my kindergarten classroom know about number and quantity? Well, then what you'll do is you will collect evidence that will allow you to answer that question about their knowledge with respect to number and quantity. And once you've collected the evidence, you've documented your evidence collection, you'll interpret the evidence to determine whether or not their knowledge and skill is consistent with grade level or age level expectations. And if it is, then you might take action to move on to the next concept, the next set of concepts in the hierarchy. And if they're not demonstrating the knowledge and skills at the level you'd expect, you might take action to maybe adapt your instruction and maybe to reteach some of those concepts. But at the beginning of the school year, there are a number of tasks in which both administrators and teachers are engaged. So you think about the timeline in conjunction with the assessment cycle, which starts with the asking of questions. But before you even get to that first step in the assessment cycle, before the start of the school year, teachers make sure that they are familiar with the with the the guidelines, they gain familiarity with the developmental expectations, so they have a clear understanding of what children in kindergarten are expected to know by the end of the kindergarten year. They review the guidelines with colleagues. They might ask, they might add examples. How might a child demonstrate that he or she is gaining meaning by listening? What are some lesson plans that I typically present in my kindergarten classroom that would allow me to get information about about gaining meaning by listening. And there are a number of different ways that you can add examples. I think the most effective way is to think about what you do in the classroom routinely and how what you're doing in the classroom really relates to some of the skills that are captured by the performance indicators in the work sampling system. Now, while the teacher is becoming familiar with the end of year expectations, is beginning to think through some of the questions that he or she will ask and for which he or she will collect evidence, um, essentially the administrator is the person who is creating the infrastructure in which the teacher will function. So you think about the infrastructure as consisting of maybe a school setting and how will you organize your school. You'll have a number of different locations that will be classrooms. You'll assign teachers to each of your classrooms. You'll assign students to the classroom, to, to each class. So the administrator is going to create the infrastructure that will allow the teacher to engage in these tasks, asking questions, collecting evidence, interpreting evidence, and taking action. While the teacher is engaged in those assessment cycle activities, the administrator is monitoring the completion. Are you, in fact, uploading data? Are you documenting your evidence in work sampling online? Are you maybe at the end of week, week four reviewing your evidence and assigning a preliminary rating, maybe not yet in process or proficient? And then are you continuing with your data collection during weeks five, six, and seven? And again, at the end of week seven, reviewing your evidence, rating, um, maybe assigning a preliminary rating. And then at the end of week nine, which is the end of your collection period, maybe reviewing your evidence and assigning a final rating. So the administrator, just like the principal in your school, is the one who is monitoring the progress, so making sure that we are, in fact, um, assessing 
children's knowledge and skills formatively, if you will. So I think there was a question back here about performance and progress. Performance really has to do with is the child mastering the skills? Is the child demonstrating the